morning. Welcome to Daily Kentucky with Carter and Carrie on Unsafe Space. Today is Wednesday, July 17th. <laughs> and Carter's sitting there trying not to laugh. <laughs> Are you muted? No, I'm laughing. You know what? It's weird. I have this weird thing where I press mute and then I'm like extra quiet. On top <laughs> I have mute pressed. I could be talking or making noise, but I'm all I don't know why I do that before the show, um, but you were making you were making uh, noises, cracking your back. You did sound like an old lady. I was, was cracking my back, and I was telling you about my dog doing yoga. Yeah. I need to get video of him doing that because he's adorable. He does he does actual downward dog, but then he also does hammy stretches, like he does standing splits almost, and does one leg and then the other leg. Nice. <laughs> well. Uh, what is it? Uh, the sun salutation every morning for dogs? Is that a new, that can be a new thing? Could be. The sun salutation. Carrie, what are we talking about today, Carrie? <laughs> I, look, I had, a, I saw a number of friends on social media making these, I hate it when people make these stupid declarations, like, if you voted for Trump, then you're a racist, and I don't want to know you, you know? Or, and so yesterday I saw a number of people making those statements again. And I don't care if they're on the right or the left. I just hate those kind of declarations. They're so dumb. Like mm. uh, just complete blanket statements about, about groups, you know, millions of people that you know nothing about. So um, one of my feminist friends, SJW friends, we used to be on the board of a feminist, like an SJW nonprofit together. Surprisingly, she hasn't in front of me yet. I don't know why. But she posted one of these. It's like, if you still support the GOP at this point, you're a racist and I don't want to know you. And I'm like, where are these coming from? And then I saw an MSN article with pretty much the same headline. And I sent this to you. Yeah, I think it was a, it was a Daily Beast article that was Daily Beast. Okay. reprinted in the M M N MSN um, from one of the editors of Daily Beast. So, uh, yeah. Do you want me to pull it up or do you have it? Yeah, pull it up. The, the, the thing about these pieces is that it emboldens, they embolden people like my friends to go and say stuff like this too. And I think it's just really reckless. Right. So the headline is Trump is racist. If you still support him, so are you. Ugh. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, you know this what, is- um, You know what I said to him? To the tweets over the weekend, you know that. I know what it's in response to, but I think it's wrong. I think it's I think it's stupid and wrong. And I, what I said to her was, uh, if you still support the Justice Democrats at this point, you're supporting racism. I'm not calling you a racist. You're supporting racism, and I still want to know you, <laughs> like because I think people can change and people can walk away from racist ideologies. And uh, of course, that got a lot of uh, applause. I'm kidding. It did not get applause. <laughs> Right. Um, well, I mean, the argument she lays out in this article, the author lays out a lot of the, a lot of the, quote, evidence that people use to, to accuse Trump of, of being a racist. Carrie, do you think it's worth, I mean, before, I don't, I know we might want to walk through the article, but I think we need to separate some terms for, out for people. Um, there's, and I'm, I'm not going to use the social justice versions of these cause they racist just means people that I don't like. Um, but there's a racism, which is tied to belief about particular races of people. Like the, this race is superior or that race is inferior or this race is problematic for whatever reason. That's racism is, is belief about people based on the color of their skin, right? And, and treating them differently based on the color of their skin or, or their race. That's racism. Xenophobia is technically just fear of foreigners, but you can, if you want to remove the fear part out of it, you can say, well, it's, it's not, not wanting foreigners and, and thinking foreigners are different. Now, they might be foreigners of the same race, uh, you might have people of different races next to you and foreigners of different races and you treat them differently because one set is foreigner and one set is not foreigner. 
I'm not defending xenophobia. I'm just describing what it is. That's, de that's xenophobia. And, and then there's something that's more akin to patriotism. I'll, I'll call it maybe American chauvinism, which is like, well, America is the best and other places aren't as good as America. And I, you know, ideally you could have that as a semi-rational opinion if you base it in ideals upon which America is formed. But a lot of people hold it as more of a sports team kind of thing, like rah, rah, America. And, and it's, you know, America is good. Other places aren't as good. And there's some truth to that, which is why it resonates with people, which is why we have so much immigration. This is why people want to come here. It is better than many countries, which is why there's mass immigration. So that's kind of like American chauvinism. All these three are conflated in these attacks on Trump. So, I mean, have you, should we pull up his Twitter, what he said, actually? Maybe we should start with the facts. Let's start with the facts, because they never wanna, go back and read these things. I don't want to trigger the social justice warriors, but we'll start with the facts. Here, here's Trump's tweet from the weekend. Now, context here, we can assume that he's talking about the squad, the four justice Democrats, Elon Omar, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Ayanna Presley, and Rashida Tlaib. So we can, we can make some assumptions. He didn't say that's who he's talking about, but we can make some assumptions that that's who he's talking about based on context. So he says, so interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt and inept anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came, then come back and show us how it is done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. That's a reference to uh, the infighting that we talked about yesterday between legacy Democrats and these new justice Democrats, which by the way, Carrie, I wrote, I wrote up my show notes yesterday into an article, which uh, you can go find on medium. It's also in the comments from yesterday's show, but so that's what, that's, that's what he's referencing with that. So there's nothing actually racist about this at all. You could argue, you could argue that, I actually don't think there's xenophobia because it's not really fear of people from other countries either, although you could maybe try and tie it to that. At best, you can argue this is American chauvinism and it's rude. And you can also argue that it's ignorant because of those four, three of them were born in the United States. So of the four women I mentioned, only Elon Omar was actually born in a country, which by the way, does have a complete catastrophe of a government. If he's talking only about Elon Omar, he's 100% correct. It is a, it's a Sharia law, crappy, I'll say the word that liberals don't like, or that leftists don't like, it's a shithole. Somalia is a shithole. And the government is horrible, it's Sharia law, there's nothing wrong and nothing racist about saying that's not a system that we respect or admire in any way, right? So if he's first just of all, he would if he's just talking about her, he's correct. You're saying, well, yes. Would... Although I mean, look, she's a U.S. citizen. I mean, she you know she grew up here, not and not entirely here, but she's been here for a while. She's a U.S. citizen. Like, I think it's it's rude to say this. Like, I don't I don't think it's nice. I do think it's rude. It's not something that only is reserved to the right. Michelle Malkin uh, tweeted out in response to some of this crap, example after example, screenshots of tweets, people telling her to go back to Asia, um, yeah. guessing randomly at what country was free. Go back to Vietnam, go back to the Philippines, go back to China. Like they just didn't matter. It was just, fuck you, conservative Asian lady, go back, right? Yeah. That was the message. So that, that sentiment that go back to your country sentiment is not limited to conservatives. In fact, I will say, uh, so one of the things that they say is leave, leave the country is a racist thing to say. Um, 
if that is true, libertarians and anarcho-capitalists are the biggest victims of racism ever. Because one of the first things that everyone says to anyone who complains about any libertarian who's like, taxation is theft, blah, blah, blah. What's one of the first things out of everyone's mouth? If you don't like it, leave. That's what they say. If you don't like it, leave. Well, yeah. if that is racist, then libertarians as a class of people are victims of racism, which obviously that's not racist. It's just rude and it's ignorant and it's, it's okay, not- Okay, but let's get, let's get specific. It's not just leave. What they, are, what they say is racist is the assumption that you came from somewhere else. Go back to where you came from. They well, say- they've also used leave, they've also said leave the country. They've used that terminology as well against Trump. But yes, in this of case- Of course, but, but I wanna, if we are getting specific about the claims and everything, what, to be clear, what they are saying is racist is saying, go back to where you came from. Yes, yes. Meaning um, you came from somewhere else. And so they view it as racist because they, his, his ignorance in, in saying this about more than just the woman it applied to, meaning uh, the other three women didn't come from another country. They say that's what's racist, is that the assumption that they're, because they're uh, black or they're brown, they're women of color, that they came, the idea that they came from somewhere, the assumption that they came from somewhere else is racist. Would you agree with that? No, I think that's just a mistake. I mean, Trump isn't the most careful person. I, I tend to agree with you, I, because, only because he likes to, obviously, clearly, we know, he likes to insult people. And I think part of that was him sort of being like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely. I absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, it, and look, uh, Tlaib it did, did, was born here. Her parents are Palestinian and she talks a hell of a lot about Palestine, right? So it's reasonable if he doesn't really know who they are or if he wants to cast shade by saying he doesn't know who they are. I know. I assume she wasn't born in Michigan, right? Um, so I, like, it's rude, but it's not racist, right? It's not, it's not racist. He's not saying it because of their skin color. He's saying it because they're anti-American progressives pushing Marxism. That's why he's saying it, right? And they are anti-American and they are pushing Marxism. And I, I, but I will, I will make this distinction in my opinion. I, I do differ with you a little bit. I do think the, if they were white Marxists pushing Marxism, I don't think he would have necessarily said, go back to where you came from. Well, he, 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 I mean, it would be hard because he wouldn't know where they were from, but if they were white Marxists and they all had, and all they did was talk about how great the Soviet Union was, if we rewind and they were, you know, Ukrainians and Russians talking about how great the Soviet Union was and Trump was president, he absolutely would have said, go back to your country. Absolutely. He would have been like, go back to your country then. I, I think he would have said that. Hmm. It's just that. Either you know, way, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't, it, it's not a big, it's, it's really not a big deal. I'm sorry. It's not. I don't care. And I don't, and I, and I completely reject the notion that if I don't care, that if you don't care about this, you're racist. No, there's more important things to care about. This is another one of these outrage cycles that he, I think, triggers knowingly. He's, oh, he's intentionally. Yeah, you're right. He's a puppet master. He tweets something that he knows is going to get, just like AOC does. They're both great at this. They tweet something that they know the other side is going to get completely riled up about. And then it makes headlines for like three days. And it's actually a win for him in the end. And, and if you're a part of this theater, it's not, it, all these people who are uh, virtue signaling off the back of this and like, if you still support him, then you have a racist and friend me. It's like, you're playing a, a part in this stupid political theater. You don't even realize it. Like he's the puppet master and you're there on stage like a marionette. Well, the other <laughs> thing he does, and I don't know if he does it intentionally all the time, but I think he does it intentionally sometimes. He says something that's mostly true, has got a little bit of an error in it. So this is an example. That's, this is true about Ilhan Omar. She did come from somewhere else and uh, it, that place is a catastrophe. So he says that, but, but he lumps in people who didn't. So there's a technicality. So now everyone's investigating it. Now everyone's going, well, 
what, what is this? What is you talking about? And people on the left are like, see, see, three out of four didn't come from a shithole, corrupt, horrible country. And people are going, most people look at it and go, really, Elon Omar came from Somalia? And it's under Sharia law? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Why? Like, because she's also, she's also under fire for sloppy language at best. We'll, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt, uh, but she's under, she's been under scrutiny for quote, belittling 9-11. I don't think she really did. I think that's overreaction on the conservatives part, but she's clearly anti-Israel, which is not anti-Semitic, but is called anti-Semitic. Um, and, but she clearly has sympathies for uh, more extreme Muslim ideology and is definitely not in the category of, hey, American, American values, All right? That's, that's not her thing. She's a globalist who is, is progressive and definitely kind of leans towards, if not outright supports organizations like CARE and... Ugh. Right. So, you know, I I think regular people who don't know who she is look at this and go, yeah, he's kind of right. He's kind of right. He should have just said it about her, but he's kind of right. He he wins. Like they they play right into his hands. Um, One of the things that bothered me about this piece is down towards the bottom, this writer just kind of rattles off this. This is the way they... uh, we talked about this when we watched uh, the hoax documentary. They mm-hmm. rattle off things as if they're accepted fact and truth. And a lot of these are untruths. And that yes. pisses me off yes. to no end because you, you <clears throat> it, it basically assumes, um, uh, it assumes that the audience is, is low, low enough IQ that they're not gonna go investigate these things or that they've just bought into it. And I think that, I think it, I find it really, repulsive uh so one of the, the big ones of course the big one and she includes it is the very fine people thing she does she includes the very fine people thing which i have uh i have the context of it yeah let's read it i was pulling that up too i i, I am so tired of this he did not say white nationalists are very fine people in fact in that same speech over and over he denounced white nationalists and he made very clear who it was he was talking about and yet even joe biden is running for president on the back of that uh, lie about Trump. And you know what? Stop making me defend Trump, people. Like, right. stop I making me defend... <laughs> that, you know, Carrie, that can, that's, can we just pause for a second there? I don't really know what they mean by support Trump. Like, he's not... I, he's, do they mean not want his impeachment? Do they mean support anything he says? Because frankly, like... If I had a choice between someone who was maybe racist, but wasn't going to steal my stuff and was going to leave me alone, which isn't really Trump, but let's just pretend. (laughs) Maybe racist, but was going to leave me the fuck alone. And someone who was, you know, pure racially, like no no racial uh, bigotry at all, just like perfect social justice-y. I don't even say social justice. I'll say no, because they're racist. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's why I can't say that. Someone who wasn't a racist at all, right? Not tainted by that, but you know, wanted to tax the shit out of me and steal my stuff and regulate the hell out of me. Uh, I would vote for the person who was a little bit racist. I would not like their racism, but I would want to get left. <laughs> so, like, you're gonna get in so much trouble for this. <laughs> I, I, I'm not supporting racism. I know, I, I know, I know what you're saying. I'm just laughing. Racist, there's other things in the world besides, there's other evils besides racism. There's lots of evils in the world. Racism is one. And most well, people running for office have a whole catalog of evils that you can weigh against their opponent's catalog of evils. Well, that's why I was saying this isn't that big of a deal, but go back to where you came from. It's just like, come on, on the scale of awful things that people have done or said, or, you know, give me a break. Everybody's freaking out over this, right. you know? Right. Um, and, and frankly, the other thing that they say is he's racist, not only his words, but his actions are racist. And the fact is his policies are indistinguishable from 
Democrat policies from 10 years ago, or even more recently. I mean, you go out onto the street and quote Obama to people and tell them it's Trump and they, they get all triggered. You quote Trump to people and tell them it's Obama and they nod their heads. I mean, there's nothing, what he's doing is not much different at, at all from what anyone has been doing policy-wise. So, you know, to, to say his racist, his actions are racist. By the way, oh, there's so much, wait, there's another thing I want to mention, but let's do, let's do the very fine people thing first. Well, although quickly, didn't he do, I mean, he, he's actually, in some ways, you say he's indistinguishable from Obama, but he's actually done some of the things that Democrats said they wanted to do, like prison reform. And, you know, I, I, I know he takes credit for it, and I don't necessarily think he should be, but it is true that black unemployment is lower now. And I think you're muted. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does take credit for that. I'm not sure he should either, but yeah. he does. It, but all presidents take credit for good economies. Right. And shift anyway. blame for bad economies. That's part of being president. So you know, here's the, just to go over this, here's the, here's the very fine people comment. So Trump is <clears throat> at a press conference. Reporters are talking to him. This reporter's like, the neo-Nazis started this. They showed up in Charlottesville to protest and Trump interrupts, right? Because he interrupts because he doesn't want everyone who was at Charlottesville painted with the neo-Nazi brush. Which is what they've done. Of course. So he interrupts and he says, excuse me, excuse me. They didn't put themselves, and you had some very bad people in that group. So very bad people. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me. He's saying, excuse me, because they're trying to interrupt him or talk over him. Excuse me, excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. A reporter says, George Washington and Robert E. Lee are not the same. He's referring to something else Trump said earlier. And Trump says, George Washington was a slave over, owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So George Washington will now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Tom or Thomas Jefferson? Do you like him? And the reporter says, I do love Thomas Jefferson. And Trump says, okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had people, many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, I, let's stop there because it couldn't be more clear. And, he, and, and throughout this whole thing, he says it several times. That's not the only time he says it. It couldn't be more clear just in case you're I'm not hearing him, he's like, let me be clear. I'm not talking about the white nationalists here. And what does the press do? And what does this piece do today? And what does everyone say? And everyone says it as if it's truth that he was, he was talking about the white nationalists, even though he took time to say, I'm not talking about them. And then he well, goes on to say in that next paragraph, he goes, now yeah. in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers and you see them come with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You had a lot of bad people in the other group. So his whole point was, which, which they will never admit, the other group, the other group had some really horrible people in that group too. Uh, all, Antifa was in the other group, okay? The black bloc was in the other group. They were there beating people up and assaulting people before the car hit before the neo-Nazi driving the car. Like, right. there were, what he is saying is factual. There were awful people on both, quote, sides of that conflict, whatever you view those sides to be. Some of those people felt like their side was this. I'm sure other people on that side felt like it was something else. They were there just, there were people who came out afterwards who said they didn't realize it was a neo, they went there, like he said, because they thought it was a thing to defend a statues from being taken down. And that was it. But then there were neo-Nazis there. Well, there, hey, guess what? There were, on the on the left side, these are just loosely groupings on the left side, there were some very fine people, I'm sure. There were also a lot of really horrible people with no good intent who were there to beat people up and assault people. So I'm so tired of this binary lie 
that they keep asking us to believe. And it makes me defend him. Why do I have to defend him? <laughs> it's odd that it's odd that Trump is speaking with too much nuance for the media. Yes. <laughs> they, like it's not that much nuance, guys. It's just a little bit of nuance. It's not much, but it's too much for you. Um, and it's because they want to hear, I mean, this is obvious. They want to hear racism from Trump's mouth. That's what they want because they need to call him racist. They need to call him racist because they are paranoid of his culture war, his, effective, his effect on the culture war. They are paranoid that he got elected. They didn't understand why. They still don't understand why he was elected. They don't like that he's tearing down the mainstream slash legacy media and his effect on that. And they don't understand it. Because they don't understand it, they are freaked the fuck out. And so anything they can do to paint him as some obviously immoral, horrible creature like anything that could be construed as racist or whatever, they're going to take it and they're going to run with it. I just want to make this point because I think this is pretty funny. Um, I've had this argument with people before where, so he says, basically he's like, uh, neo -not this group is neo-Nazis, but there were some very fine people there, I'm sure, right? And they take that to mean he's saying this entire group, all of these people are very fine people. On right. the other hand, when he says that uh, illegal immigrants, some of them are, are rapists and criminals, but I'm sure there are some very fine people too. They take that to mean he's not saying the whole group is very fine people. Over here, they say, and some are very fine people. Oh, he means all of them are very fine people. But then over here, when he says some are rapists and some are murderers and some are criminals, but I'm sure there's some very fine people, they say, oh, he doesn't mean the very fine people part at all. Right. <laughs> he just means, he just means yeah. these are all rapists and murderers. I'm like, two, the same thing. He uses the language, the same language often enough that you can find cases like that and say, well, they, could, they treat it completely differently. They treat it completely differently. So I just yeah. think that's kind of funny. No, that's a great point. They, he says, it's, it's again, it's a very, it's very mild nuance. Hey, there's two different kinds of, there's at least two different kinds of people in this group. One's good, one's bad. And if they want him to have said they're all bad, that's what they assume. If they want him to say they're all good, that's what they that's assume. That's what they assume. Exactly. How about just take what he said at face value, which is right. that there's good and bad people here and there's good and bad people here. But they're right. like, oh no, he says all these people are good. But he says all these people are bad. No, that's not what he said. Anyway. Yeah. Well, Carrie, I think you'll appreciate this. Well, I hope you appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, this is a headline that was in the Washington Post. It says, <laughs> I love this. Trump's racist tweets were written in the White House, which slaves helped build. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't know how, I don't, I mean, how can you get more pathetic than that? I don't know. Um. <laughs> this article, this Washington, was that the Washington Post? Yes, it was the this Washington, Washington Post. Washington Post article was written on my iPhone, which child slaves helped put together. I'm sorry, but it just, what are you going to? I think the whole thing is like, Obama slept in the White House, which slaves helped build. <laughs> <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> Jesus Christ, the, the, the level of stupidity is astonishing. I, I don't know if they're actually stupid or they just assume everyone else is so stupid that this passes as any kind of rational, coherent statement. I don't know. <sighs> it's funny, though. <laughs> it's funny. You just put that as a put that as the end to any sentence. You know that that game that kids used to play where you end every sentence with in the bed in the in bed or whatever. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which slaves help build? <laughs> <sighs> in the White House. This which coffee is good. Which slaves help build? <laughs> uh, I have a press house. I have a press conference later. I've got to attend in the White House. Which slaves help build? <laughs> <laughs> everything everything is which leaves help them uh, i i will say i want to say this i don't like having to defend trump either because there are many policies of his and statements of his 
with which I disagree vehemently. But, but we are in a position where when this kind of crap is slung around, especially when, I mean, it's one thing to paint him as racist, which I don't believe is true again, but it's another thing to then, I, I, I don't know if this is a strategy. They think this is going to help them win the 2020 election, but like calling everyone racist, not, not going to work. It's They've not been- going to work. It's not going to work. And they've been doing it since he won. And I, at the time, I was like, th- this is before I full on walked away, right? I was still, I had switched my party affiliation to green because I was pissed at how the DNC helped pick uh, uh, Clinton over Bernie. And, um, you know, I felt like the party wasn't representing me, but I hadn't yet full on walked away. And after Trump won, I mean, I desperately wanted to understand why he won. We've talked about that before, but I, but part of the reason I wanted to understand was because I didn't want him to win again in 2020. I still, when he when he was elected, I thought, just like all the SJWs and everyone, the, all the uh, Trump derangement syndrome people, I was like crying that night. I thought, I was like, a demagogue has been elected, you know, it's one of these people who believed all the lies. And, um, and, uh, and I wanted to figure out why he won because... I didn't want him to win again, right? Right. Like, isn't that, doesn't that make sense? Except what I kept finding was that people on my side uh, didn't really care so much why he won. They wanted it just to be about racism and that's it. And it wasn't, or about sexism and that's it. And it wasn't. And if you said anything else, then you were out of line and they would tell you to stay in your lane or and all the stuff they say, you know, when you, when you disagree, Um, the attempted shaming, the attempted uh, bullying, like, you need to be quiet and keep those thoughts to yourself. So all I've seen since he won is a doubling down on things. And I was trying to say back then, cause I really was like, guys, like, are we going to let this happen again? You can't call people. You can't be like, okay, let's just look at the group of people who voted for Obama twice and then voted for Trump. You can't say you bunch of racists and expect them to come back to your party <laughs> next time. Right. Like, isn't the goal to win people over? Why are you, you don't win people over by calling them horrible names, which don't even make sense. They voted for Obama twice and then Trump. They're not, clearly it's not motivated by race. So um, they don't care though. They don't live in the, they, to them, I've, I've made this point several times and you know what they say to me? We don't need those people who left. We don't need those people. I'm like, well, you're pushing away even more people like me. Like all my friends in Walkaway, they don't care. If, if you say to them, hey, I don't know how big Walkaway is, but anecdotally, it's, I think it's pretty big because personally, personally, I know a lot of people like me who've walked away now and not all of them have walked to the, the middle, like the nomad region like me. You know, I, I finally switched it, my party affiliation to independent, but a lot of these people have become Republicans. A lot of them bec- have fully gotten on the Trump train and I understand why. And uh, to pretend like that's not happening. It seems like sticking your head in the sand. And you know what they say? We don't need those people. What, what is your strategy then? We're going to, we're going to get the people who haven't voted before. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hate to say it. I think they may not need those people. Um, Demographics are shifting. So uh, they may, they may not. And certainly if they're, you know, we talked about this, yesterday, if, if the Justice Democrats are as good at social media and manipulation and, and you know, spinning a narrative as they seem to be, they may not, they may not need those people. Um, but I, you're right. What I'm hearing from you is the best way to help social, I know, so I don't care about saving social justice warriors because I think there's very few of them and they don't matter uh, so much as like, talking to normies, right? We've talked about this. But I know you care about pulling social justice warriors out. Yes. What I'm you is the best way to pull social justice warriors out is to just throw fuel on their fire. Let them get crazier and crazier and people will self-select out. Go, holy shit, what the hell am I a part of? <laughs> Maybe that's true. I haven't thought of it that way. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you go. Everyone's a racist. Woohoo! <laughs> People will self-select out. It's like, you guys are crazy. Yeah, obviously they're crazy. Yeah. But I do want to say, I want to say one thing because I, you know, I read this Daily Beast article and most 
of the citations for quote proof that Trump is racist are just like what we showed the Charlottesville kind of thing. There was one that uh, that actually bothered me, and it's secondhand, and Trump has denied it. But um, in a book by John O'Donnell in 1991, now granted, this is decades ago, uh, this guy had been president of the Trump Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. He quoted Trump as criticizing a black accountant and saying, this is a quote, don't demonetize me for this quote, Twitter, or I mean, YouTube. You can demonetize me for other stuff. Here's the quote. Black guys counting my money, I hate it. The only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yarmulkes every day. <clears throat> I think that, guy, that the guy is lazy and it's probably not his fault because laziness is a trait in blacks. It really is, I believe that it's not anything they can control. So that is a racist statement. Absolutely. I will agree that is a racist statement. Um, now, Trump has denied these. And we don't know. No one was there. I don't but, think you would have a statement like that today. But if he said that, yes, it is if a racist statement. If he said that today, I would be like, yep, yep, that's a racist statement. Now, this, this may also piss people off, but it's possible to make a racist statement and not be a racist if you later say, you know what, that was racist and I'm sorry and I didn't mean it and that was wrong of me. Because... When well, people are, you and I are in agreement on something, Carter. Which is that, like, okay, just quick aside. It's possible you just said it's possible to make a racist statement and not be a racist. I agree. That's why my SJW friend, who's like, if you support Trump, you're a racist. I don't want to know you. And I'm like, well, if you support the Justice Democrats, you support racism, and I do want to know you, because it doesn't mean that that person is a racist. It means that they are supporting. SJW ideology, which is racist, maybe because they think it is fighting racism. Okay, and I just wanted to make that point. I understand. I agree with you. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't change my categorization of professional social justice warriors as evil people because doing making a statement once in a while, screwing up and having remorse for it is completely different than than consistently and over and over again pushing an evil ideology. So. I'm, I, I wouldn't lump those two things into the same camp. If Trump repeatedly said blatantly racist things like this and never apologized for it, and, it's, and if he, on top of that, to, to keep going with the social justice analogy, on top of that, joined an organization like saying racist things all the time, pushing racism, I would call Trump an unabashed racist. I wouldn't say he said a racist thing. I would okay. say he's racist. Well, what about like Ayanna Presley, who says something very racist? We don't want black faces if they're not. I don't know. I don't know her at all. Yeah, I yeah. I suspect she's racist because I know she's social justice, and yeah. she's built a career around social justice. So at the very least, she's evil, um, because social justice is evil, and she has a career based around social justice. She's built her life around an evil ideology. In my book, and I know your book and my book are not the same book, in my book, that makes her evil. So, okay. well, but anyway, for that my, aside. my point is here, look, this is racist. If Trump said this, this was a racist thing to say. Um, and now, you know, I don't want to excuse it because it was 30 years ago, but it was 30 years ago. And it's possible that he's changed and had remorse over this. And he denies ever saying this. So well, do we know? We don't really know. If that's all the evidence they've got, uh, I'm going to go, mm. uh, I'll, I'll give the guy the benefit of the doubt that either he's no longer racist or never said this in the first place. But he certainly isn't saying racist things now. He's saying things that you could argue are American chauvinism. That's not racism. Well, they try and conflate things all the time they they definitely would try and conflate um american chauvinism or even uh what what do, what do the proud boys say they're western chauvinists they right. try and conflate western chauvinism with 
racism or with white supremacy, which is not the case, but they do it all the time. They try and conflate nationalist with white nationalist, which are two different things. Um, but you know, this is yeah, just- Yeah, I think they're, they're doing it generally with the word culture, don't, aren't they, Carrie? Yeah. I think. Western you say, culture. You know, Western culture, it's like that's somehow a racist thing, but culture is a, a set of beliefs and practices and traditions and, and ideas. It's not, and preferences for things. It's not a race. Um, and, and frankly, people who talk about Western culture are generally talking about the most important fundamental aspects of Western culture, not everything. Uh, I don't think those people care if we continue to eat hot dogs or switch to, or switch to you know, shish kebabs. That's not the important part of Western culture. Right, it's freedom of speech and freedom of religion and that kind of stuff. Well, that's so, the part of Western culture that Marxists want to destroy. Freedom, yeah, of, speech. of course. And so they need to just. <laughs> there's no good argument against it, and so they need to just throw it all into the racist bucket and and scream racism. So anyway, uh, I guess probably most of the people watching this show are are racist by the Daily Beast's definition of racist, uh, because I think I again I think their definition of support Trump is anything short of arguing that he needs to be impeached and thrown in jail. Well, yeah, they, they, what does that even mean? I, I get into discussions all the time where people call me a Trump supporter. I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, what is your, what's your definition of Trump supporter? Like you just said, I don't, I didn't vote for him. Do I defend him? Yes. You put me in that position quite a lot. <laughs> right. But you don't always defend him. <laughs> I don't always defend him. No. Um, it's a funny thing. Yeah. It, again, they like to reduce everything to such childish binaries. You're with us or against us. You're a Trump supporter. You're not either you, either you want to impeach him or you're a Trump supporter. Right. Like, right. I, and I think it's because they're driven by psychology, not intellect, but that's possibly a conversation for another day, Carrie. Yes. Possibly. On that note, thank you all for subscribing. Uh, please, if you haven't, hit the subscribe button. And you can also support us in a plethora of ways. You can share our videos. You can go to Subscribestar slash Unsafe Space and do one-time donations or subscribe. If you subscribe, you get your name in the credits. We should probably do names and credits for like a brief period for one-time donations. We just haven't thought about that yet. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you can go to unsafespace.com and use Bitcoin or something like that if you'd rather. So, oh, and there's a shop now with stuff you can buy. Yes, we have t-shirts that say make, make Democrats liberal again, which I'm very Harry excited loves, about. Harry really loves those t-shirts. So um, help her out by buying some because she needs <laughs> to make a rational argument about their viability and profitability as a thing that we do. So. Oh, it is a thing. You guys, you sure. guys, Carter and I are <laughs> telling me they're exciting and popular, but I'll tell you what, Spreadshirt says no one gives a shit. So. Well, we just announced it yesterday. One day. Well, are you kidding? For a while. They've been up for a while. No, but I haven't mentioned them at all because. Oh, okay. the, well, well, now's your chance, everyone. Yeah. Make the it. design wasn't good until yesterday. I see. The design was awesome. You just no. didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Now <laughs> it's know. great. Now go check them out, guys. Make, make Carter's designs great again. Go. Go. You can cut this out, but just in case you don't want to, I, can we point out, we've never talked about this on air, what? how um, some people have a problem with Carter's painting in, behind him. And now oh, that I know, there? no, we've never talked about it on air. Oh. And now that I know people have a problem with it, now I see it. Now I'm like, look at that naked man back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a naked guy behind me. He's there because uh, all of the other paintings that I had that would fit in that space, and I want something in that space. All the other stuff in the house was uh, had glass on it, and the reflection, like from the lights in the room, was like really horrible for the podcast. And it also was reflecting my screen, which makes me paranoid because sometimes there's a password file open or whatever, and I didn't want to have to police that. So I wanted something that didn't have glass. I grabbed this, which used to be over the fireplace in the living room. And now it's here, so, you know. But I like if, that people I, thought there's, what's the meaning behind it? Yeah, if enough people subscribe and support the show, I will buy a painting, a separate painting that also doesn't have glass 
or I'll figure something out and I'll move the naked dude. But the naked dude is not any weird satanic thing. It's Hippolyte Flandrin. He's a 19th century painter. It's from the Louvre. It, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing weird about it unless you're one of those people that think that, you know, art is the like classic art is somehow weird. But you know, I don't hey. think you should get another painting. I think you should just put clothes on him. <laughs> yeah, I could put a cape on him in the Justice Democrat. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this part in, Carrie. This is good. Okay. Well, well, real quick, because I mentioned it, because today is a rare day where you can kind of see mine. See, mine does have a glare. Yeah, so, your glare's not too bad, but there's a glare. Yeah. But so people can't really see that. But I think the same people who had a problem with yours might have a problem with mine if they could see it. This is a. Can you see that? It's kind of creepy. It is a little creepy. It's a woman coming up out of uh, the water. It makes me think of um, the Stepford Wives because she looks like she's being this woman's being made out of some milky substance. And oh. uh, anyway, the it Stepford is a little Wives or Westworld because it makes me think of Westworld when you say milky substance and or oh. Westworld. It makes me think of Westworld too. Either was, one. I didn't know they did that in Stepford Wives. I don't remember that part. No, I don't remember they. I don't think they. That's not the process by which they made, but it, my head goes there. It's a great book. Well, thank you for the insight into your thought <laughs> process. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Okay. And yeah, bye. Bye. Dear AI overlords at Google and YouTube, today's SJW sacrifice, sacrificial reading is a continuation of Scum Manifesto by Valerie Solanas. Eaten up with guilt, shame, fears, and insecurities, and obtaining, if he's lucky, a barely perceptible physical feeling, the male is nonetheless obsessed with screwing. He'll swim a river of snot, wade nostril deep through a mile of vomit, if he thinks there'll be a friendly pussy awaiting him. He'll screw a woman he despises, any snaggletooth hag, and furthermore, pay for the opportunity. Why? Relieving physical tension isn't the answer, as masturbation suffices for that. It's not ego satisfaction. That doesn't explain screwing corpses and babies. Completely egocentric, unable to relate, empathize, or identify, and filled with a vast, pervasive, diffuse sexuality, the male is physically passive. He hates his passivity, so he projects it onto women, defines the male as active, then sets out to prove that he is, to prove that he's a man. His main means of attempting to prove it is screwing, big man with a big D tearing off a big piece. Since he's attempting to prove an error, he must prove it again and again. Screwing, then, is a desperate, compulsive attempt to prove he's not passive, not a woman, but he is passive and does want to be a woman. Being an incomplete female, the male spends his life attempting to complete himself, to become female. He attempts to do this by constantly seeking out, fraternizing with, and trying to live through and fuse with the female and by claiming as his own all female, female characteristics, emotional strength and independence, forcefulness, dynamism, decisiveness, coolness, objectivity, assertiveness, courage, integrity, vitality, intensity, depth of character, grooviness, etc., and projecting onto women all male traits, vanity, frivolity, triviality, weakness, etc. It should be said, though, that the male has one glaring area of superiority over the female, public relations. He has done a brilliant job of convincing millions of women that men are women and women are men. The male claims that females find fulfillment through motherhood and sexuality reflects what males think they're fi they'd find fulfilling if they were female.
this concludes our reading today of Valerie Solana's Scum Manifesto. So tell me about your relationship with your father. 